probably can tell already. I'm, I'm, I'm not a business professor. I'm not an economist. I'm a professor of journalism. So about something, my crystal ball is as cloudy as yours. I don't know the answers to everything. Everyone always asks me, what's the future of journalism? I say, I don't know. I can make some, I think, intelligent guesses, but I don't know. Uh, no one knows. Uh, but I'm convinced there will be a future. Uh, and I also think uh, there's a special role for journalists, not just for news organizations, the companies, but for journalists, reporters, writers, editors, and so forth. Um, and I think the, the technological changes and the business changes in journalism organizations actually requires more professionalism, more training, more skills, more ethics, more of a number of values that separate professional journalists from citizen journalists, or from amateurs. I like citizen journalism. I think if you look at the coverage of the Arab Spring, whether Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Syria now, much of what we see is citizen journalism. It plays a very valuable role. But I see some very significant differences between what professional journalists do what citizens do. So here are some of the values that I think distinguish professional journalism, professional journalists, from any other kind of media, technology, or communication. And there, there are five values, I think, that make, them, make us different, and that will survive no matter what the business model, no matter what the technology. First, verification. Verification of facts. Making sense of complicated issues. And this means analysis and comparison and uh, interpretation, not simply your opinion. So verification. Second, being an eyewitness to events. Actually seeing, going there and seeing, talking to people, watching with your own eyes listening with your own ears, rather than just repeating what somebody else told you or what you read somewhere. Journalists go there, see it, feel it, hear it. That's professional journalism. The third thing is, I would call it, speaking truth to the powerful. That means the government. It means businesses. It means the church. It means whoever happens to be in a powerful position in society. Journalists, professional journalists, must tell them what the ordinary citizens are experiencing, what they think, what their lives are like. We speak the truth to people in power. And the fifth thing that separates professional journalism is investigation. We don't believe anything until we can prove it. Go search for the truth. Don't be afraid. Well, you understand what investigation is. Okay. Those are the five traditional values of journalism. Now I'm going to add some new ones. My personal list new values. So in addition to those five, I suggest the following. And they're based on the way technology has changed journalism. I, I, the first one would be transparency. Let the public, let the citizen understand how you make journalism. Tell them who you talk to. Tell them where you went. Tell them how the story was created. 
No mysteries anymore. The public has a right to know if, they will, if we expect them to trust us. How do we make journalism? So transparency. You, you tell them what you don't know. Say, these issues we still are investigating. We don't know the answer yet. But with these, we can tell you the facts. So transparency would be number one. Second would be a sense of community. Too much journalism, too many journalism organizations, especially in big cities. Um, seem to regard journalism as a series of announcements or pronouncements, rather than something that's an integral part of life in a community. Today, particularly with social networks and with citizens who have the same technology I have, we are a community and we can share information. And so I think that's really important. It's important that we have a conversation with the public. That's, that's a big change for journalism. Journalism was always, you know, we speak, the public reads, or listens, or watches. Now, it's a conversation. The public comments, the, public's, the public takes photographs, and video, and audio, and citizen journalists contribute, and people debate in a very, very different way because of technology. Journalism must become a conversation with the public, not announcements. Um, as you all know, uh, journalists today have to be competent, not expert, but competent in many different ways of making a story. So, should every journalist know how to take pictures? Yes. Video? Yes. Audio? Yes. Should they know something about how to design a web page? How to use social networks? Yes, 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 and yes. Um, not expert, just confident. For two reasons. First of all, the public is confident in many of these things. So how can journalists be less confident than a 15-year-old kid in high school? who knows how to do a web page, who uses Twitter or Facebook every day, who shoots video and edits on a laptop. How can we call ourselves professionals if children, our own children, are better at this than we are? We don't have to be expert, but we have to be confident. Uh, I, someone interviewed me, uh, several people interviewed me today, and one of the questions was, do I think of journalists as uh, becoming a turtle, <coughs> a big package on their back, and uh, all the equipment and so forth? Um, to a certain extent, yes. Um, but it, it's, it's very, very important that not just journalism organizations learn to work in a multimedia world, but that we as individuals can do it. Even just a little bit. That's different. Uh, and then uh, the next value I would propose is visual information. Every kind of visual information. Video, of course, but also graphics. Data visualization is now very, very important. Uh, uh, web design, photography. We live in a visual world. And the younger generation, the, the consumers of the future, uh, the people that will keep our journalism organizations alive, really live in a visual world. So the more we can make all of our stories, all of our presentation, the look of our newspapers, the, the design of our web pages, <coughs> highly visual, and even you know cartoons and drawings, anything. Visual. And so journalists, many journalists who have traditionally thought of text and words, now have to think text and words, but also in a visual context. Very, very important. Not simply um, a nice thing to add to a story. It's essential. It's essential. Um, and the last thing uh, I want to mention, which is very new and, and still very controversial, um, is I think journalists, I, 
I'm, I'm certain that journalism organizations, and I believe that individual journalists should learn about uh, audience measurement, what we call metrics or analytics. There's a phrase, web analytics. You know, if we're, if we're working in a digital environment, uh, and we are, um, it has some difficulty, it presents some difficulties. We have to learn these new techniques. But it has some real advantages. And one of the advantages of the digital environment is that it's really easy to conduct research about your audience. In fact, for most of us, our own device gives away information about us. It, it's easy, you know, the telephone company knows where you are geographically because your phone is sending a signal or your location. They know when it's turned on, when it's turned off. The, the, the internet providers know when you logged on, how long you stayed online, when you logged off. The, the major news organizations, of course, know not only when did you log on and when did you log off, but what pages did you look at. The New York Times can track everything about your usage of the New York Times. How many stories did you read? How quickly? How many pages did you visit? How long did you stay on each page? Did you click on any links? And if so, which links? Did you look at the graphics? Did you play the video, the embedded video on the New York Times? Oh, you just read the text in there. So it's a great measurement tool. I'm going to talk later um, about what a terrible job I think news organizations have done in using this research. It's basic consumer research. The automobile companies have done it for 